In this video, we'll be learning about stream cipher and block cipher. We see that in the cryptography, we have studied the symmetric ciphers in my earlier video and asymmetric cipher and protocols. So in symmetric cipher, we have seen that we use one key and in the asymmetric cipher, we use two key. And symmetric cipher is further divided into stream cipher and block cipher. So there are two categories which comes under the symmetric cipher which uses the one key. Now let us look at what is stream cipher. So in stream cipher the one bit of plain text and cipher text is operated with one bit of key at a time. We say that key generator this generates a stream of bits k1, k2 up till kr. So let me to consider k1 up till kr. So these are the bits of the key. And we have we consider the plain text bit as p1, p2. So let us consider plain text bits as p1, p2 up till so on pr. And let us also consider for the ciphertext. So for the ciphertext, I am using now the notation as c. So in case of the ciphertext, I am going to plain text and XOR operation with the key. And on the reverse process, so for the reverse, when we say the reverse process, that means to decipher. So earlier one is for the encryption process. Because we have a plain text and we have the key, we got the cipher text. And for the deciphering, we follow the back process with the same XOR operation. And in this case, cipher text is XOR with the key. And to explain this, let us consider an example. So in this example, let me to first write the encryption process. And in the encryption process, let me to consider the plain text in the form of the bits. And here, I have written the plain text in terms of the binary digits. So this is 0, 0. Since the binary digits consist of either 0 or 1. So let me to consider this is any plain text conversion in terms of the binary. And let us now consider the key and this key also is converted into binary digits. So this is the key. And then we apply the XOR operation. So XOR operation will give me the cipher text. So the truth table corresponding to the XOR operation is written here. And for this I am considering two bits. So X and Y. So let's consider the options for X and then we consider the options for Y. And then we find the XOR relation. So we can have both are 0. So this is 0. This is 0, 1. This will give me 1. This is 1, 0. This will give me 1. If both are same, this is giving me 0. So here we say that if they are same bit, so the result is a 0. Whenever they are same bit, so the result is a 0. Whenever they are different bit, so the result is 1. So we say the result is 1. So now following this process, we see that 1 and 1. If you look at here, this is same. So this will give me 0. Second 0 and 1, this is different, so this will give me 1, 1, 0, 0, this is same, so this will give me 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this is the ciphered text corresponding to this plain text and key. So this is the operation that we have used. And in case of deciphering, so let, let's consider now for the deciphering. For the deciphering, let me to first write the cipher text. And then we write the key and then we should get the same plain text that we have initially started with. So in the cipher text, let's write that one that we have got in the earlier case here. And now let's apply the key. Key is same because we are doing symmetric cryptography. So the key is same. So we have used only the same key. And then again apply the XOR operation. So we get 1, 0, 1, 1 and this is 0. So you see that this plain text which is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 and this plain text they both are same. So that means for the appropriate key while applying the XOR operation we can find the cipher text. So now we see why XOR operation is better than AND and OR operation. So for this let's consider again two bits and we apply the AND operation on these two bits. Let's write all the options for AND. So this is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So if this is 0, 1, this is 0. If both are 0, this is giving me 0. 1, 0, this will give me 0. 1 and 1, this will give me 1. Now you see that here, whenever we consider 0 and with the 0, there are two choices we have. So suppose that the plain text is 0 and with the key, we have 1 and 0. So these are the two possibility in the key. So if this is the plain text and then we have applied the key. So the resultant output is 0. So you can notice that here, this is 0, this is 0. For these two zero, if I have applied one and zero, obviously I always get a zero. So now that means as a cipher text, when I always get a zero, knowing that my plain text is a zero, irrespective whatever be this choice. So this is not very secure. 
so the crypt analysis can make a guess what could be the plain text this could be the zero because only for this choice we are getting the same result so this is why this is not very considered as secured now in the similar way let's look at for the or operation also and for this also now i'll apply or operation so in this case we consider this zero 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 one this is one we got one zero one we, if both are one then also we got one now again in this case we see that whenever we choose one as a plain text corresponding to this one whether the key is zero or it is one so you notice that from these two options so this will give me the choice both choices still it is giving me one so again by knowing this script analysis may know whatever be the answer if it is one irrespective what is given here in key if in the plain text it was one the resultant is always one so he can make a guess what could be then plain text so that is why xor operation was considered as better and more secure because with the zero say in the plain text we have zero and we have applied now in the key zero or one so if they are in this if they are the same bit so we get the resultant as zero but if they are different then we get the resultant as one so or if in the plain text we have one and here we have zero and this is one if the bits are different we get the resultant as one if the bits are same we get the resultant as zero so that is why in the stream cipher we apply the xor operation in block cipher a block of bits of plain text is operated as a whole and used to produce a cipher text of block of equal length and here we can use a block size generally we use a block size of 64 bits or 128 bits operating at a time so that means what we have here is we can consider here the plain text and let us write now plain text suppose that we have plain text in this format again in the binary digit now let me to consider this in as a two bit at a time so if i consider two bit at a time although in general we now consider this 64 bit as a one block we may also consider four bit eight bit but the length should not be very small of the block size because if the length is very small it is too easy to break so if we consider length of block is small it is having less security and the length of block should not be very uh, large also because then it takes a lot of uh, time to encrypt the data so now here to understand let's consider this as the uh, block of two bits so here i have considered this into two bits and then we want to encrypt this with the key so key is also attached again in the binary digits form so let's consider any of this one and so we get the cipher text now the cipher text also get in the same block say for example here we have two bit so i will also get first two bit data here in the cipher text then the next block will give me the next bit then the third block will give me the third uh, block of the cipher text and fourth will give me the fourth block of the cipher text so we can say that for each k let us say ek is a permutation or the bijective mapping over the set of input block so for example i consider now the encryption process and let's say this encryption process depend upon the key and the plain text so in the key we have these two as a binary digit and let's say key has a length k and we want to operate this with the plain text which have the length n so we get now the cipher text as 0 1 to the power n so the length of the cipher text is same as what we have in the plain text for the deciphering process you can consider deciphering for the uh, cipher text or we may say the inverse process of this so we can follow the same way with the key and now we have the cipher text and we can get back to the plain text so here it moves block by block as i've explained in my earlier case here we move block to block with the help of the key now this is the uh, general diagram of the block cipher and stream cipher both we can see that in the block cipher each block in the plain text uh, is transferred to the cipher text with the same block length and there is it has to pass through the encryption process with a key and similarly in cipher text you can see that the key uh, either we can take a key or even for the key we can have a key generator and the key is again converted into bit stream so plain uh, text is also converted into bit and then we have encryption process and then we got cipher text so that bit function that i've written in the diagram this is where we apply the xor operation and we get the cipher text in stream cipher examples for the stream cipher this is vernum cipher this is the modified version of wengrin cipher and this is further a case of the polyalphabetic cipher so we have already done this polyalphabetic cipher in my earlier videos and for the block cipher we can have des and ida algorithms